Welcome to the class on Phone Photography by the Arts Council of Rockland. ACOR is a nonprofit art organization dedicated to advancing arts, culture, and the role of artists in the community. I'm Eugene Lagana. Let's begin. Today's modern smartphone gives you a huge technical advantage, as we all know. You have more technology in your pocket than was used to send the first man to the moon, so let's take advantage of that technology. This gives you more technology than Ansel Adams ever had. More than one photo on the cover of Time magazine was shot with an iPhone. One more example is Steven Soderbergh's feature film Unsane was filmed entirely with the iPhone 5S. Tonight's demonstration will begin with covering different pieces of hardware to better assist you in taking great pictures with your phone. We'll cover features built into your phone that you may not have been aware of including all the different ways to trigger the shutter. We'll go into the editing capabilities built into the app on the phone. These features will be demonstrated on an iPhone, but the same capabilities are available on the Android platform. I'll be reviewing different hardware, but I'm not sponsored by anybody. These are just my personal experiences that I'm sharing. Let's begin with some simple pieces of inexpensive hardware that can make a huge difference in your photography. My favorite piece of hardware you can find on Amazon for just seven or eight dollars. Just search for iPhone tripod with remote and sort by lowest price. I think it's an unbelievable value. I started out by buying more expensive Joby tripods that cost over $40 and always broke after a year. There's no need to spend more than $10 for an unbelievable unbelievable piece of hardware. The other huge advantage of, to this hardware is that you can unscrew this top bracket and then put your iPhone in this bracket and put it very low to the ground to get macro or close-up or even pet photography. It's a huge advantage. And what this mainly does is, is it stabilizes your phone. People don't realize how much their phone moves when they're about to take a picture. And the other advantage is when you press the on-screen shutter using the wireless Bluetooth remote, it eliminates that movement that you incorporate when you touch the on-screen shutter. So let's demonstrate. We're gonna take this sample phone I have here. We're gonna put it in the tripod and watch what it does. I'll take a picture of myself and we'll trigger with the Bluetooth remote. If you don't have a Bluetooth shutter release, use the timer to release the shutter and that will also drastically reduce camera shake. Another great piece of hardware is the Camel Apps. Let me demonstrate the Camel Apps. The Camel Apps will enable you to do a panning time lapse. Now let me show you an example. This is basically an egg timer, and there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to make one yourself, but they only the Camelapse 4 only goes for $12 on Amazon. You simply twist it, and it acts as an egg timer, and it'll take a slow panning time lapse, which will give you fantastic video. The next piece of hardware is a lens add-on. There's a lot of different manufacturers ranging in all different kinds of prices. These give you the option to shoot wide angle, zoom, macro. The downside is, is that they're expensive and you have to carry them around with you, which adds a lot of bolt to your phone. Let me demonstrate how it works. This one attaches to your phone with a simple piece of elastic. You put it in front of the lens, put this on, and now you have a, a, a different lens than what comes with your iPhone. And there are some advantages to it, but again, it's expensive and it adds a lot of bolt to the phone. The next piece of hardware I'm gonna talk about is an external microphone. An external microphone makes the difference between somebody watching your entire video or clicking away because the poor audio quality is just too distracting to the message you're trying to convey. I did a bit of research on different microphones and found that a lot of YouTubers are having great success with this $30 microphone from Purple Panda. Here it is here, it comes in this little black case. It comes with a nine foot cord and a discreet lavalier to clip onto your shirt. I'm using it now. So you can see how the quality is relative to the built-in mic to your phone. The last piece of hardware, and I saved the best for last, 
and it's my favorite low budget piece of hardware is a gel pad by Fixate. It's easy to carry around. I put one in the car, in the camera bag, on my desk, and they cost less than a dollar each. Here it is here, and I'll demonstrate how it works. And this will enable you to take non-shaky pictures with the timer, or take any kind of video stabilizing your phone, and you could take a time lapse. Let me demonstrate how it works. I'll peel the plastic off. I'll stick it right to the wall, like this, and you simply take your phone and stick it right to it. Now you can use the timer on your phone and it'll take a perfectly still picture. You could take great stabilized video with it, or you could take a still time lapse. Now let's move into the app and software options for your smartphone. Be sure to have the latest operating system update downloaded to your phone. For the iPhone, 13.5 just came out as of mid-May. Keeping current with the latest update rollouts will unlock additional camera features. Now that we're in the iPhone, let me show you how to check what version you have. Go to Settings, scroll down to General, tap General, then tap Software Update. Right here, you could see the version that you have. I'm currently running 13.5, and it says you're currently up to date. This new version has two features to address the corona disaster. First, if you have a mask on while trying to do Face ID, it'll quickly go to the keypad so you could type in your code. And second, it has contact tracing built into the operating system, which is turned off by default but can be used in the future if needed. Now that we're in settings, let's talk about a way to harvest better quality photos out of your iPhone. Let me show you the section where this resides and then we'll explain the ups and downs to changing the format of your photos. In settings, go to camera, then go to formats. You're given the option between high efficiency and most compatible. High efficiency is Apple's term for raw format file. The extension will be HEIF, not JPEG. If you're planning an important shoot with your iPhone, use high efficiency. Otherwise, keep it at most compatible, which gives you a JPEG file. People don't realize there is a setting in your phone to take higher resolution photos, but the downside is that it's less compatible across the board and the file sizes are a lot bigger, taking up more space. Also, because it's not a JPEG, it's not processed like photos that we all know. To achieve best results with this format, you may have to bring it into Photoshop and that's another downside. You'll have to manually process the photo with contrast, sharpness, and other adjustments that are normally done automatically with a JPEG. Now let's switch gears and talk about what EXIF data is. An important note to photos coming out of your phone is what's called EXIF data. EXIF stands for Exchangeable Image File, and this embeds a lot of personal information from your phone into every photo. It's important to note because every time you email or text a photo to somebody, you're giving them information like when you took the picture, where you took the picture with longitude and latitude because it embeds the GPS information into every photo that your phone takes. It also tells the time. The EXIF data will also tell the make and model of your phone, which camera you used on your phone. The current iPhone, the iPhone 11 Pro has four cameras. The EXIF data will also tell the camera settings, meaning aperture settings, shutter speed, and ISO. So be careful. Now, social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram strip away EXIF data and it can't be viewed by the public. But some social media platforms retain the EXIF data, giving them massive amounts of information about photos that are uploaded. So remember, every time you text or email a photo, you're giving away a lot more information than just the picture. To disable this feature, you can go into settings and turn off location services. In settings, scroll down to privacy, then click on location services, 
then click on camera, and then switch it to never and EXIF data won't be embedded. Now let's talk about the native camera app and the different ways to click the shutter button. First, you can simply hit the on-screen shutter button within the app, but that introduces camera shake. Look how much the camera moves when you hit that on-screen shutter. I'll try and demonstrate it right here. There's the on-screen shutter. And when you hit it, the phone moves slightly. As demonstrated earlier, you can use a Bluetooth wireless trigger but if you don't have one, there are other options. While in the camera app, you can also use the volume up and volume down buttons on the side of the phone to take a picture. You are already bracing the phone with two hands and you can simply hit the volume button to take a picture. Let's show how that works. And now the camera is more stable. You can also use your headphones to trigger the camera, which is very advantageous because now you have what's called a wired remote. Let me demonstrate. I have a headset, I have a set of earbuds here. We'll hold the camera and using the earbuds, just hit the volume up or down button and it'll take a picture. Another very important feature on the screen where you're viewing your subject is the ability to select focus. Let me demonstrate how that works. But first I'll introduce you to Mr. T. Now the phone has decided what to focus on here. It picked Mr. T, but what if you wanted to focus on the camera on the wall in the background? You can change the point of focus very easily. First, we'll tap on Mr. T to ensure that that's what's in focus. To change the focus point, just touch a different area in the frame that you wanna focus on. We'll click on the camera on the wall in the background. And now you can see Mr. T is blurred and the camera has focused on the wall in the background. In addition to the focus point, you can also adjust the exposure with the star on the right of the yellow focus square. We'll slide it up to increase the exposure or you could slide it back down to decrease the exposure. There's also another option with this yellow focus square. If you hold down on the point of focus, it'll lock the focus at that point and it's indicated by AE AF lock at the top, which stands for auto exposure autofocus lock. With this done, you can now move the frame and keep that subject in focus. And that's a huge advantage to your composition. Now let's explore hidden menus within the app. To access the first set of menus, swipe up on this line here. And the first item you can adjust is flash. You can set it to auto, off, or on. The second item is live view. Currently, it's off and it's indicated by the line through it. These two items are also adjustable from within the app without accessing this menu. The third item is aspect ratio. You can select square, 4.3, or 16.9, which gives you a much wider view. The fourth item is timer. You could set it to off, three seconds, or 10 seconds. And the last item is filters. This will enable you to change the color and tone of your photo, but I wouldn't recommend using this. It heavily alters the photo that you take. Another hidden component is the actual on-screen shutter button. You can slide it in this direction to quickly switch from photo to video and it'll start recording as indicated by the timer up top. The second hidden feature is that you could slide it in this direction to take a burst mode of photos. Now let's do a deep dive into one of the features we just reviewed and that's live mode. Live mode is very easy to turn on and we'll begin with that. Simply touch that concentric circle and now live mode is on. This gives you a lot of options after the photo is taken. Let's go into photos and see the capabilities you have when live is turned on. Here we have a photo of a waterfall and you can see that it was taken when live was turned on with the word live in the upper left corner. All you have to do is flip the photo up 
and you have four other options that were generated because live was turned on. First is live. And if you hold down on the photo, you'll get three seconds of that scene with audio. The second option is loop. And it'll continually run that three seconds. The third option is bounce. And it'll move that scene forwards and backwards. The fourth option is long exposure and this is my favorite especially with a waterfall look what long exposure does with that photo it took all photos and it blended them into one and that's an unbelievable feature to have in a smartphone there's another little known feature you can access when a photo is taken with live turned on if you look at the thumbnail of photos below the main picture you can hold down on it and it'll expand this will give you access to all the pictures that were taken when live was turned on. It takes three seconds of pictures, shooting 10 pictures in each second. That gives you access to 30 pictures. You could scroll back and forth through this list of pictures and select the best one. That's a huge advantage. Now let's get into editing. Simply click on edit on the top right and we'll go through all the features that are available under the edit menu. This puts very powerful editing right in your hands without exporting the photo off the phone and dropping it into Lightroom or Photoshop. Let's start with the first editing tool on the bottom right. This is the crop tool. This will enable you to crop out elements of the frame you don't want, or you can also straighten the horizon in the photo Use the slider and move it back and forth and you can see in real time what edits are about to take place. You can also touch either of the four corners with the thicker line shown here for a finer adjustment. Within the cropping tool, there's also a keystone adjustment. You can expand the top forward or expand the bottom and you can adjust it for left and right. Now let's move to the next editing tool. When you click on that tri circle, it gives you a filter even after the photo was taken to change the color and tone. The next editing tool looks like a clock with dots around it. There are a lot of different adjustments within this setting. You could tap this button here for an automatic adjustment, or you could use the slider. And this behavior works the same for all of the buttons we're about to review. The next item is exposure. And again, you could use the slider to slide it up to increase the exposure or down to decrease the exposure. The next item is brilliance and the slider works the same way. And you could do this for highlights. You can adjust the shadows in the photo, bringing out more detail that may have been lost in some of the darker areas in the photo. You can adjust the contrast brightness, the black point, saturation, vibrance, warmth, tint, sharpness, definition, noise reduction, and vignette, darkening the corners. These are very powerful editing tools that are readily available and very easy to use. Now let's review one more feature from the main camera app menu, and that's portrait. This has a lot of capability in it. You can produce pictures that you would think were taken with a high-end camera and a lot of processing time. It's a lot of fun. Let's take a look at it. Click on portrait. So before you take the picture, you can set it from natural light to studio light, contour light, stage light, stage light mono, or high key light mono. But when you're in portrait mode, all you have to do is take the picture and then you can apply any one of those adjustments afterwards. Just go to photos, bring up the picture, and now you could slide through those adjustments afterwards and select the one that suits your needs. And that concludes the lesson on phone photography. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you have any questions, contact me on Facebook under Eugene Lagana or go to eugenelagana.com 
and email me and I'll answer any questions you have. Thank you.